Hey Eagle fans, it's Eagle Fan Carl. This is going to be my preview prediction video for the game against the Dallas Cowboys this Sunday. Before we get started, we've got to give a big old shout out or a happy birthday to our franchise quarterback, Carson Wentz. You see, I got my Wentzylvania shirt on today. Uh, so we're celebrating the fact that uh, I think one of the best things that happened to us this year was we finally got a franchise quarterback. This season, I think, showed that. And I think uh, we're set at the quarterback position now for the next uh, decade. Let's take a look at the game itself. Preseason, I actually thought this game was be, going to be an easy win for us, uh, but for very different reasons. Uh, I thought Dallas might be out of it by this point. Maybe we would be in a position where we'd be able to uh, uh, potentially play for a playoff position. Uh, although preseason, I didn't think we were going to do that well. But uh, as I was certainly looking at it earlier in the season, I thought that this would be a game that we, we should be able to win. Uh, obviously, now it's a very different game than what I thought it was going to be a few months ago. Uh, but I still think that this is a game that Eagles can win, and for some very different reasons. But I do have to say, this game is going to be very hard to predict because uh, the Cowboys have said they're not going to be playing many of their starters, at least on offense especially, and so that sort of makes it a little more challenging uh, to sort of predict uh, exactly how this game is going to go. Uh, in theory, the Eagles should be able to win this game if they're uh, not playing their starters. We played them very close down in Dallas when they did have their whole team, uh, and we are actually playing with probably more of a team now that we have Lane Johnson back. We didn't have the first time we played them. Uh, so in theory, you would think we should be able to win this game. Uh, but those are the things that always make me uh, nervous is when it looks like everything's pointing to an easy win, uh, then it always concerns me that it's not going to be as easy as maybe it looks. All that said, though, the Eagles are favored in this game, and I think that says a lot as, as it relates to how people are viewing this game. The Eagles, playing their full complement of starters, should be able to beat basically what amounts to the Cowboys' backups. Uh, so for that reason, I do feel good about this game going into it, but it is sort of hard to predict. An interesting news item that came out this morning is the fact that they're saying that Tony Romo might actually play. Earlier in the week, Jerry Jones had said that he would not be playing, uh, but now it looks like he will be playing, which I think is great because it gives us one more chance to hopefully beat up on Tony Romo, and I'd love to see that. Of course, the flip side of it also is even if Tony Romo doesn't play, Mark Sanchez is probably going to be the quarterback who takes most of the snaps. So either way, I think we get uh, the joy of watching hopefully one of these quarterbacks who we certainly have not liked over the last few months uh, in Sanchez's case and several years as it relates to Romo and hopefully see our, our team get to be able to beat up on them. As it relates to Romo, though, it's sort of an interesting take that I have uh, on the Cowboys and Tony Romo. Uh, that I think a lot of people are overlooking is the fact that I think Tony Romo's injury actually helped them. And I think they're having the season they're having because Tony Romo got injured. And not because I think Dak Prescott is so much better of a quarterback than Tony Romo. It's because it, it forced the Cowboys to do what I think they're built to do, which is run the ball. They've got a great offensive line that's very good at run blocking, and now they've got a premier running back with Ezekiel Elliott uh, so it would make a lot of sense for them to just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And that's what they've done this season. And Dak Prescott has made his plays, but for the most part, he has not been the one that's been asked to win them games. He's been asked to basically not lose them games. Uh, and as a result, they've had a lot of success doing that. If Tony Romo had been in there, I don't know that they would have taken the same approach because Tony Romo, even when they had DeMarco Murray, uh, and you would have thought that they should have been running the ball more, they were always more... Uh, reliant on the pass than they probably should have been. I think that was because they had Tony Romo, they wanted to get Des Bryant involved, and they figured that that was the way that they were going to be able to do things with their some of their big playmakers. But I just don't think that, that the, that's the way this team is built. This team is built to use the running game to then set up the pass, and that's what they've done very effectively this year. So as in, in a sort of ironic way, the Tony Romo injury has actually really helped them and set them up for the success that they've had this season. At least that's my opinion. But when we're looking at this game, you know, normally I do, this would be the part where I do my statistical breakdown and look at, you know, where the, the offense and defense ranks. And there's really no sense in doing that in this game because we have no idea who's going to play for them uh, to really know what is sort of comparable, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I don't think they're going to be playing many of their big playmakers at all. I'd be surprised if Des Bryant and Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott play out of the first quarter. They might play a series or two just to sort of keep... Uh, some reps and, and make sure they're not getting too rusty going into the bye week that they'll have for the playoffs. Uh, but 
ultimately, I don't know how many of those guys are going to be playing beyond the first quarter. Uh, and in that sense, they're going to be playing this game more like a preseason game. So especially on the offensive side of the ball, looking at their stats is basically just throw them away because uh, you, you really can't judge this team based on the, what their stats has been this season as it relates to this particular game. Their defense is a little bit different. You could probably take a little bit of the statistics out of the defense and maybe extrapolate them for this game. But then again, I don't know if they're going to be sitting guys on the defensive side of the ball too. Uh, one of the things that sort of jumps out at you when you do look at their defense is their running defense has been very good. They're right now the number one team uh, against the run in the NFL. It's kind of ironic. The last couple of weeks we've been playing up against top running defenses and we've still managed to be able to establish a run game against them. And I would think that the Eagles should still continue to do that again. Another thing that sort of jumps out is you look at their running defense versus their passing defense and their passing defense is not good at all. They're 27th in the league against the pass. But I think both of these statistics can be a little misleading when you think about how the Cowboys have played this year. And that is they're 13-2. and two. They've been winning a lot of games, and that means, especially late in games, teams have had to throw the ball against this team and not been able to run the ball because they're trying to catch up. So when you have sort of that breakdown, it sort of is difficult to really look at exactly how the team is doing on the defensive side of the ball if they really haven't been forced to defend the run for a whole entire game. should also point out that the two games they did lose were against the Giants, a team notoriously horrible at running the ball. So even though the Giants would have been leading in those games, ultimately they probably would not have been running the ball at the end of those games because they just can't. One other stat that does sort of jump out at me for this game is if you look at the time of possession for the entire NFL, the teams that are one and two in time of possession are the Cowboys at one, the Eagles at two. So both of these teams uh, have been trying to control the ball and control the clock, and that has ultimately helped both of their defenses out. Uh, so the success that we have had on defense, I think, has been largely due to the fact that we haven't been challenged as much on the defensive side of the ball, unlike uh, the coach who won't be named from last year, who didn't care at all about time of possession and exposed our defense and really made them have to do a lot more than they had to. So you put all that together, and where do you think that leaves us for this game? I would say I still think the Eagles win this game. I think it's relatively easily that they'll win this game. So my prediction is going to be Eagles 27, Cowboys 13. So I see them winning by two touchdowns. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, if you think the Eagles are going to win this game easily, uh, or if you think we're going to struggle. Let me know what you think and what's your prediction. Uh, you can leave that in the comments below. I apologize for the change in video, but there was an issue with the audio on the recording for the end. And rather than just re-record the whole video, I just decided to add some photos with some audio uh, as there was something else I wanted to look at for this game. And that's Carson Wentz's stats for the year, as there are some potential records he could break in this game. First of all, in the Giants game, you'll recall that he already set the franchise record for completions by a quarterback. And that's for any quarterback, not just a rookie quarterback, but any quarterback. Uh, and he broke Sam Bradford's record that was actually from last year. There is another record for completions that he could set uh, in Sunday's game, and that's the all-time single-season record for completions by a rookie quarterback in the NFL. And he would only need three completions on Sunday to break that record, which, uh, once again, ironically, is held by Sam Bradford from his 2010 rookie year with the Rams. So he'd only need three completions to break that record. In terms of franchise records, there are two potentially that are in play for Carson Wentz. First is pass attempts by a quarterback, and that's going to be much easier for him to break. Uh, all he's going to need is eight pass attempts to break Donovan McNabb's record from 2008 for most pass attempts by an Eagles quarterback in a season. And once again, that's for any quarterback in Eagles history, not just rookies. The other one is going to be a lot harder to reach, and that's yardage in a season. For him to break Donovan McNabb's franchise record from, once again, 2008, he would need 380 yards on Sunday to pass that mark. So that's very unlikely. I don't think he's ever thrown for that many yards in a game this season, but it is a possibility. So if he gets off to a hot, a hot start and throws for something like 200 yards in the first half, it will be something that uh, I'll be watching for in the second half. Finally, since it is Carson Wentz's birthday, let's go ahead and finish up today with a Carson Wentz touchdown montage uh, with just some of the highlights from this season. So happy birthday, Carson Wentz, and fly, Eagles, fly.